area, which is only 20 minutes from the Opera House. And as you can hear and see, hopefully, everywhere around me, I am surrounded by hundreds of creatures that are clearly ignoring social distancing laws. It's called Lachlan Swamp in Centennial Park. So, if you want some company, come over here. It's open, unlike the Opera House. If you like Beethoven, of course. Before we go deeper, why are wetlands and mangroves important? I mean, aren't they just dirty, muddy and stinky swamps that should be developed? They used to be undervalued, but are critically important, biodiverse-rich ecosystems. We like living close to the coast, and it's great, I love living close to the coast, but it often means development, infrastructure, and even things like sea walls, which are designed to keep rising sea levels at bay, are detrimental to these fragile, often coastal ecosystems. They are likely close to your home. By exploring and valuing them, they are likely to be preserved for future generations. And that's regardless of whether you hold the anthropocentric view, I believe that we on top of the pyramid, or whether you hold the ecocentric view. I believe that we are a member of species family. Right now, we are affected by global and local events, whether it's social distancing or isolated. So it's a good idea to spend at least two hours somewhere like here. Which brings me to the next point. The University of Exeter in the UK, where the study took place, states that, quote, it's well known that getting outdoors in nature can be good for people's health and well-being. But, un but until now, 2016, we haven't been able to say how much is enough, end quote. The study was using a large nationally representative sample of 20,000 people in England and took place between 2014 to 2016. By the way, all references are in the description below. Its aim was to assess the relationships between being in nature and improved health with a measure based on direct exposure to natural environments, rather than residential proximity. And you can see that there was no linear increase above 60 minutes. Notable point is the 2 hour per week threshold category, and longer durations were not associated with better outcomes. The case is a bit stronger for health on top than well-being on the bottom. Alright, but what are the benefits? It's lower probabilities of cardiovascular disease, obesity, diabetes, asthma hospitalization and mental distress in adults, and lower risks of obesity and myopia in children. I'll see you in the mangroves. I'm at Saltpan Creek, which is an urban watercourse of the Georges River catchment in Sydney. There are fantastic boardwalks through the semi-urban mangrove forests. These boardwalks are great, because mangroves link the land and sea. Mangroves are intertidal communities of plants that grow on the coastal foreshores and estuaries. These plants are adapted to salty conditions, which most of the vegetation can't tolerate. There are at least 90 species of mangroves in the world of which 37 occur in Australia, mostly in the tropics. Their number decreases southward. Here in Sydney, only two species occur, the grey mangrove and the river mangrove. In Victoria and South Australia, it's only the grey mangrove. Mangroves have historically been considered to be wastelands. As a result, many areas have been drained, reclaimed or become degraded. We now understand the ecological value of these habitats, which serve several purposes, such as Provide feeding and breeding habitat for fish and birds, act as filters for nutrients and sediments, reduce erosion and maintain water quality, provide protection and buffer during storms, cyclones and tsunami, act as carbon sink. In fact, Australia's coastal wetland ecosystems capture carbon on a per hectare basis at rates of up to 66 times higher and store 5 times more carbon in their soils than those of terrestrial ecosystems such as forests. But how do they survive in these conditions, especially dealing with high concentration of salt? Three points. Grey mangrove has spiky vertical roots called peg roots, pneumatophores. These act like snorkels and provide air for the underlying root system in otherwise poorly aerated soils. They also have high concentration of salt in their sap, and the leaves have a waxy coating that limits salt water penetration. Australia has the third largest area of mangroves in the world. Approximately 22% of the total coastline is covered in mangrove forests, so I feel very privileged to be able to explore them right here. If this floats your boat, there is a table in the description.
listing some mangroves and wetlands for Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne. I'll see you in the wetlands. Alright, the final destination. I am in Wherrywood wetlands, which are the largest remaining sand plain wetlands in the northern Sydney area. The 2.4 km walkway network provides an excellent opportunity to enjoy them. Unlike the difference between desert and rainforest, the line between wetlands and mangroves is blurred, but there are some differences. While mangroves are usually tropical to subtropical and coastal or along riverbanks, wetlands are often inland and found in most regions of the world. Wetlands are environments usually in low-lying areas adjacent to rivers, creeks or floodplains. Areas where water covers the soil, all the time or periodically. The availability of water determines the species distribution. They are one of the most biodiverse regions, providing habitats for birds, amphibians, fish and mammals. They include, for example, swamps, marshes, billabongs, but are also artificial, for example, ponds. Why are wetlands important? Additionally to the benefits of mangroves already discussed, wetlands provide important benefits for Australian commercial and recreational fishing industries by forming nurseries for fish and other marine and freshwater life. Alright, so in summary, we looked at the importance of at least two hours per week in nature to improve your health and well-being. I think it's not an unrealistic target. A little bit of social distancing, but not too much, so you know where to go. Um, then we went to some urban wetlands and mangroves, so hopefully they're not just dirty swamps to be drained, because they aren't. We are sustainable butterflies at com.au. If you haven't done your SQ test yet, head to our website. And finally, who are we doing this for? For the environment, future generations, beautiful plants, beautiful animals, including fantastic butterflies. You have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.